Blog Talk Radio. I'm telling you, baby, it wasn't me. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is David supping for Pam on Take Two Radio Show. I good have evening, with David. Me. Good evening. We have Anthony, Carolyn, and Will with us. Hi, everybody. Hola, amigos. <laughs> Tonight, we are so very excited to have back with us the creator, writer, and executive producer, Kevin Spiritus, and producer-director, Allison Venor of the award-winning series, After Forever. We will be talking to them about the next chapter called After Forever, Riley's Unforgettable School Project, School Project. which na- is now available on Amazon Prime. And I believe, hold on. Let me see. Hello? Kevin, is that you? It is me. Hello, who's this? Hi, Kevin. It's David from Take Two Radio. Hi, David. Hi. Good to talk and to we're you. all here. Hey, Kevin, it's Anthony. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. <laughs> How you been, bro? Oh, well, here. I'm uh, good. Is it just the two of you, or is there one more? No, we have Carolyn, Carolyn is here. and Will. There's four of us. Hi. Carolyn and Will. Hola. Okay. Hi. okay. <laughs> just making and, sure. And we're waiting for Allison, right? Oh, Allison, I, she may hop on. Uh, she had some things come up. Uh, that actually could not be um, rescheduled, so it just does. It's just me holding down the fort of After Forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just you. So with, why don't we get started? I'll start out with Pam's questions. She has some for you. She says, "Okay." Okay. Um, uh, came up. Remind me. Are, are we are we recording right now? Is that? Yes, we are. No, we're live. Okay. We're live. live. Great. All right. We are live. So there we yeah. are. Hi, folks. I couldn't remember if this is live or pre-recorded or <laughs> pandemic. We're live and recording. Who the yeah. heck knows? We Hi, are live. Hi, everybody. We're recording. <laughs> Welcome back, Kevin. It is it is Thank a you. pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Pam, unfortunately, so, has a lot going on in um, in the cold Chicago area, so she has sent in some questions that David is going to ask for her this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So who came up with the idea of doing this next chapter for After Forever in the form of Riley's school project? Riley's unforgettable school project. Riley's <laughs> um, unforgettable. Well, um, I first need to um, – I need, I need to call attention to the understanding that um, – my collaborator and writing partner, Michael Slade, who um, I've worked with from the beginning with After Forever, um, sadly, in a, in a tragic life-imitating art, art scenario, um, lost his battle to cancer last December. So um, he's no longer with us. Um, but the legacy of what he has invested and created with me and this project I hold very dearly and I just wanted people to know that while we are discussing this that um, it's not an easy it's not an easy uh, 
answer anymore to just sort of spit it out and go, well, this is how it happened. But um, uh, so I'm, I'm going to start now with uh, Michael and I had written season two. We finished writing season two and we filmed season two. We were supposed to write, um, excuse me, we were supposed to film season three back to back with season two. So both season two and three were written and then COVID happened. So because we were not able to schedule season three to come directly back to back with, you know, the filming um, schedule, we put it away and put it on a shelf. And then when COVID happened, <clears throat> we didn't want to slow down the momentum we had. And we thought, what could we do that's current? What could we do that's, you know, kind of, um, you know, keep, that will keep us relevant with the storytelling, but also not, not dismiss what's happening in our world right now. And um, that's when we came up with the idea to do a remote uh, film shoot <clears throat> with uh, Riley being the center of the story. Riley's Unforgettable School Project is about um, uh, Riley, who played, who was played by Finn Douglas in both season two and one and two. He gets a, he gets a, um, an assignment from school to create uh, any project he wants about the most unforgettable person he's ever met. So that way, he was able to enlist all of the friends and family and um, talk about Jason. So that's how we kind of created this story, and we could do it by sending a camera to each actor's house and sending the microphone and sending the ring light and sending the computer and getting on Zoom and saying action. So that's how we did it. It's wow. a very different. It's a very different style. It's a sort of a documentary style. Um, uh, it, it, have, have any of you seen it yet? <laughs> that's, yes. that's the question. We have, um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's very different from the touched. season. Yeah. So uh, that's how it kind of came to be. Um, it was it was an effort to move story forward without it being uh, without it becoming a memorial and pay tribute to the characters still dealing with loss. And that's kind of how it. Fell into being. Oh, it came to be. Oh, that's good. I think you basically answered her second question. Um, let me just skim a little bit. She said, so everyone is in the kitchen, living room, bedroom. She like, Paul's in the tub with a glass of wine. <laughs> and that was that um, was a fun part. And, well, it's, uh, the thing, the thing, and it was, was it written the way, that way, or did everyone have free reign? to tape where they want well, to? That's a really great question. Um, you know, we had to do location scouting via Zoom. And uh, to do this, we had to sign up a Zoom account and get everybody at different times to say, take us through your apartment. There are characters in the story that actually live together because they play, <laughs> they, they are married to each other. Uh, the two Pauls, Lisa and... Um, Lisa and Andrew, and then there's also um, there's also uh, who's uh, uh, Peter and Mark, and they right. live together. And Finn, who plays Riley, they're all supposed to be living together. So we had to find each person's area of an apartment that could actually be that they're living in the same place. And um, and when we scouted. Um, uh, Jameson Stern's uh, apartment, uh, we had originally wanted him to be just sort of lounging on the floor, resting up against the couch. But um, he, made a, he made a comment about, you know, if I had to get away from Paul number two, I'd probably go to the bathroom and take my bottle of wine and sit in the bathtub. And we said, yes, go in there. Let's see if we can do it and do your stuff in the bathroom. So that's how that sort of thing got matched. It, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like free reign, like let's just set up the camera. You know, we had to consider the lighting. We had to consider the, the location of where we were at in, in, in um, reference to where the other person might be. What, someone doing the dishes. Wow. <laughs> That's <not something>. <laughs> <laughs> the dishes in there. Uh, so anyway, um, it was a real, it was a real, uh, uh, fun opportunity to find the 
personal touches that each care each person brought to their character by where they were in their own apartments or houses. And uh, my character, Brian, right. my character, Brian, goes to the kitchen, and uh, I actually flew back to New York. I could have probably done um, – I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm hearing a, a lot of dropping, something, and it's very loud in my earbuds, so I don't know if there's someone moving something or – um, it's quite it's hard in to, my place, so it must be someplace else. Because it's it's echoing, and I'm yeah. I'm sorry for I'm I know it's live, it but it's echoing. You what? Okay, so anyway, I'm just trying to talk over my echo. Technology, folks. Technology. Um, yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> um, you yeah. sound, you so, sound great. You sound great. Okay, thank sense. you. I, I'm, I'm just, I, I hear myself talk, and then I hear myself talk, and then I hear myself talk, and I'm trying to uh, <laughs> go in between the echoes. Okay, anyway, for those of you listening, I hope you're following all this. Anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the idea was uh, I could have, Brian could have found a place here in my own apartment or my house that I live in Los Angeles, but I really wanted to see Michael at the time and go back to New York and be able to see him because I felt that he might very well be having a rough time and it could be the last time I see him. And as it turned out, it was, um, it was the last few times I got to hang out with him during COVID carefully. Um, and work. Yeah. we, we were, we filmed everything by being on zoom. I was, a, I was always at a different place than he was when we were, actually filming each person's scene, but I would go visit him and we'd talk about projects and such. And um, um, that's all I can, it was a wonderful thing. And Michael told you something about your performance in Riley that he never said for season one or season two, right? Say it again, please. I said, and Michael told you something about your performance in Riley's Unforgettable School Project that he didn't tell you about season one or season two, right? You mean in the writing of the character? Or he told me in personally how much, something? In how much screen time you'd have and um, what the oh, genesis oh, of the oh. actual project would be. Oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting, you're getting, uh, <laughs> you're getting the second end of that. Yes. Uh, he said, um, you probably won't be the star of this particular episode. And I said, okay, okay, center me, though, somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. It, it, it's, it's really it's told beautifully through the eyes of Riley, but it touches everybody's um, story about loss and, and yeah. continuing to move forward um, as we deal with that. So I know, I know Pam had some questions for Allison, but she's not here yet. Well, so uh, I'm I don't gonna know if go she's going to come on. Do you, yeah. Do you want to ask me for Allison? And I yeah, can I got some of... for you. I can go for uh, mine. Um, how much of Michael's heart went into yours and Mitchell's characters? Hmm. Good question. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think, Michael, we, we discussed a lot of this in, as we were writing – each season, um, you know, I think Michael had a lot to offer because of his late partner having passed away two years prior to us actually meeting each other. And it was a real, it was a real uh, healing for him to kind of work through that emotional uh, situation and experience that he had had firsthand. But I felt that it was also cathartic for him because I remember him saying at different times, you know, sometimes there were conversations I wish I had had, you know, not me, but he had, wish he had had with Richard, his late partner, or that he would have rather the conversation gone like this, you know, in a certain way. So he kind of artistically got to um, improve uh, and, and, Heighten some of the scenes and some of the characterization of both Brian and Jason. I, I do have to say, sitting back from all of it right now, and the way we were, the way we were moving so quickly into the editing process and uh, and getting this episode up on Amazon, to sit back and watch it now, it's it's sort of eerie to think that we could all be talking about Michael and not just Jason. Yeah. Yeah. 
I got that. I got that feeling by watching that. I, when I was watching it, I I thought, I thought, uh, I saw you all giving love to Jason, but I pictured Michael in there, and yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I wept <laughs> oh. for all of you, and I'm sure the wow. rest of us did too. It's a, it's it's a moving it's a moving story. Um, <clears throat> it's um, I think it's extraordinary how Michael was able to weave together such beautiful stories that would kind of dovetail off of each other into the next, and they all brought you full circle into us getting to know us, meaning the audience, getting to know a little bit more deeply about things that were never said in the series about each character. Like how Lisa and Jason met, or uh, as I as Brian speaks about, as Brian speaks about, there is a um, a trip they took, you know. So the great thing yeah. too is I, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag about Finn Douglas who plays Riley. Um, yeah, every season do. we've had we've had the wonderful opportunity to uh, have. Tony Award-winning Katie Huffman sing a song in each season, um, but there was not a place for her to really sing in this particular episode. So, um, because it was Riley's project, and we both know that Finn is so musically gifted, um, Michael said, "Why don't we ask him? See if Finn would want to write a song for the character." And um, I'm I'm very proud to say he did an extraordinary job. He he wrote that song called "Forever There." And it is, um, it's a testament to not only his work as an artist, oh but what he, li- what, he put it, what he was able to take from season one and two and put it into that little special. Yeah. So. Oh, he, he's extraordinary. You answered part of my second question, mm-hmm. which is I am, I am continually amazed by the very poised and professional Finn who plays Walt <laughs> Riley. So where did you find him, and what type of future do you see for him in this business? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I I cannot be responsible for finding him. Um, uh, we Michael was in um, New York, and uh, he had – oh, God, I'm blinking on her name right now – our casting director who we used for this. Oh, uh, to kill me. <laughs> don't listen. Don't listen. No. Um, but uh, he brought in some. I'm going to look up her name right now. I've got a lot on my mind. Um, anyway. Uh, no worries. No worries. And they had they had they had a, a casting call, and Finn showed up, and they put about five or six people on tape, and then they sent me the the choices of who they were circling and kind of thinking about, and I gave them my first choices and we all agreed that Finn was the one to do the job and so he got it um, I, I I think he's going to be an extraordinary presence in the entertainment industry he, uh, we're putting together right now we're creating a we're creating a, a music video uh, of the song and he oh. went back into the studio and re-recorded all the harmonies and played all the instruments and it's quite extraordinary. Oh, he's he played all the instruments. Uh huh. Wow. Um, well, in in the in the film in the episode, he plays just the guitar. Yeah. But uh, and we wanted we wanted him to sing it live. We didn't want it to be this overproduced, um, lip synced you know version of you know all of a sudden he starts to strum the guitar and there's a symphony. It, it just didn't fit with the the feel the of, tone of the piece yeah the tone of the piece and the feeling of you know we're in a pandemic you know he's not in a, a studio he's in his living room and he's playing guitar so uh oh. that was the um that was the emphasis of having him sing it live but we wanted to have a clean beautiful arranged version of it so he went back into the studio recently and he plays the piano he plays the guitar he plays the drums and he just Things, the harmonies, it, um, it'll be out soon. Oh it's God. really lovely, really lovely. I'm very proud I of him, and I know Michael is too. 
Yeah. Please let us know so we can promote it as much as we can when it comes out. Oh, yes. happily, happily. Okay, Will, you're next. Will, you're next. Mm-hmm. Will? Mute it. Wait a minute. Okay. All right, let's Will. jump to Carolyn, and oh. we'll go with Will afterwards. <laughs> Okay, Hi, go, Carolyn. Carolyn. Carolyn wants to take you back to Salem. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got your you got your other questions there, Misty. Yes, I do. I okay, understand. good. Thank um, you. Uh, Kevin, since this was uh, recorded remotely, was it easier mm-hmm. or harder? And would you do it again? Uh, well, you know, I would. First of all, I have to hand it to Allison Venor, who, for the first two seasons, was our producing partner on this project. And when it came time to arranging and to creating and organizing a remote film shoot, Allison's uh, Allison's uh, abilities and her her uh, experience and her knowledge on the technical aspects of what this show needed to have done was bar none, the number one person we wanted to have be with us and help us do this. And her relationship to the characters and knowing these characters was a huge plus. So it, it was just the perfect choice to say, Allison, you want to take a crack at directing this? She, she really wanted to. And, and um, so that I, I'm so grateful that she wanted to do this and she, to watch her set everything up and, you know, even when she and I, because she and I are the only ones who live in Los Angeles as opposed to the entire cast who live back east. Um, and um, we went to go look at camera samples and how we were going to shoot this remotely and uh, just going with her to the, to, the, uh, to the camera house was extraordinary and a lesson for me. Um, but uh, would I do it again? I guess it's the, it's the, if the part calls for it, if, if the if the content cries out to be done remotely, I guess you have to. But um, they're doing it on TV. Everyone's in a Zoom call, so you've got to watch how that's being done and how that's being filmed and set up. Um, but uh, our studio is not the big budgeted show. I, I can't wait till we can get back to a more normalized way of shooting. I can't wait till the COVID, you know, limitations and re- um, restrictions are lifted and um, or eased up a bit. And everyone gets their their vaccine, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's all because I have to say, there. season three, I have to say, season three is a beautiful completion to the trilogy of season one and season two, and it's um, it's probably, if not some of the best, if not Michael's best work, I think, in writing. Well, the uh, the zooming and all the virtual has thrown everybody. Uh, into um, chaos, really. So it's uh, yeah. the undertaking was, I'm sure, was monumental because, it, and it's more yeah. work. Uh, and uh, the average everyday person doesn't realize that. So you did a fabulous. Well, it's job not only more work. Kind of Thank you. Yeah. yeah, It's more work <laughs> for the individual actor actually, because the actor has to have their house, you know, presentable. They have to use their costumes. They have to do their makeup and hair. They have to do their right. lighting once the light is said to them and it's a it's a real undertaking and um yeah. you know we're very spoiled but um i'm i'm happy to say it it, it came out it was, light years better than i ever out, thought it, it would out very well yeah it worked out thank very you. well yeah. thank you uh, my second question was for Allison but i can um uh, i can ask you uh, the same question mm-hmm. um sure. What what words would you describe working with this cast and crew? What words would I use to describe working with yes. this cast and yes. crew? Well, yes. <laughs> um, uh, this particular cast and crew was the people you saw on camera. Yes. Me, Michael, and Allison. And we had one uh, gentleman um, uh, who... Um, how can he, he was our camera person who would deliver it, um, uh, you know, to um, Hightow. 
would drive the camera to each person's house and wrap it up and drop it off in the uh, uh, hallway for them. And then they would get it and they'd take it inside and he'd sit in the car and wait and come back and pick it up and take it to the next person. But um, it was, um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a family. We were all part of a family. And I think we were all determined to work and we were all um, dedicated to creating in the face of the pandemic. And then I think also because Michael was battling um, the last stages of his disease, um, it was, we were rallying together. And it's so, it's um, it's a testament to um, his strength and what he did and what he wanted to have done. So I think she would I, I think she would agree that it it was a it was a loving um, act for all of us to be involved. Well, it shows it shows. And, and, uh, and I, I don't want to forget about our editor. Thank you. I don't want to forget about our editor Rob Padgett either because he is the other element of our of our cast. Um, you know, uh, and our crew this time because we really, uh, it went from the camera to Rob's and he started to edit it together. And um, so, lovely. Okay. Will? Yes. Hello? Hello. All right, Hi. Willie, you're up. Hi. Hey, Willie. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Uh, I wanted to say that I did enjoy the project and it truly did touch me and I was also emotionally moved to tears. I've got two questions oh, for you. you. Did you have any roadblocks while creating such an epic project? Uh, uh, roadblocks? You mean uh, for Riley's I'm unforgettable I'm scope project? Besides COVID? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I mean, so like besides COVID. the... Yeah, well, that's all, Chris. Like, what did you do during that situation? Did, were you able to do some maneuvering, or did you have to do, like, a, a improvisations, or how did you handle that situation? Well, I, I, I think, I, as I mentioned before, this was an idea that, that season three was already written and we were ready to go ahead and film season three until we got shut down by the pandemic. So when Michael and I didn't want to lose momentum with the storytelling, um, it was important to us to come up with a way that we could offer um, uh, more honest portrayals of, of the way that these people that we've gotten to know in season one and season two, dealing with the mourning of a, of a loved one, you know, the loss of a loved one. And uh, it, Michael scripted these, these stories so beautifully. He's, he's such a wordsmith. And, um, but for any, any, any other aspect of blockage, it was just, you know, no, we, we, once, once we got on Zoom and we said, okay, what are you going to wear uh, and what, where are you going <laughs> to film this? Okay, now go to the next char- er- <coughs> character excuse me, <coughs> and say, okay, that dress, hmm, that's too blue, and it's, the lighting is not going to – let's do it, you know, whatever. So those are the technical things. Um, okay. the, roadblock, I, the roadblock, I will say, was um, Michael's health failing. And um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I wanted him to be absolutely – Wanting him to be absolutely um, uh, present for it all because, you know, we all kind of knew this could possibly be his last time creating. Right. Yes, I can understand that. Well, my second question is the, the project you did is very compelling and profound. Are you working on any future projects as well? And could you hint any little part of it? Um, right now, um, right now we're just kind of getting ready for all of the Emmy nominations and putting all the, the the pieces together for that with After Forever, yeah. Riley's Unforgettable School Project. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alice and I have another project that we're kind of working on that um, has to do with bootlegging um, in uh, a dry state in the early uh, 60s. Um, and uh, I'm working right now, I am also personally working on another project um, a series, it's as it's crafting to be right now, with uh, Jennifer Peppermint, who was our director from season one, and she and I are doing a, uh, a 
a story about domestic abuse. Um, and um, it, yeah, excellent for the survivors. I would think that's uh, <laughs> but it's it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a it's a cautionary tale, and it's it's um, something that she uh, has an idea about because of experiences that she has been. Um, present to and, and connected to and uh, we're trying to find the best way to offer content that is um, interesting and personal and uh, also healing uh, and and resonates with someone who might be in that situation. Uh, and that's also something that I don't know a lot about. I just happen to know good story and structure, mm-hmm. which is um, how I work with Michael. You know, Michael and I really had a lot of brainstorming sessions where we'd sit at the table or we'd sit at a coffee shop and say, where's that scene take us and how will that pay off? So Jennifer and I have got a great relationship and I loved working with her in season one. So we're trying to find that creativeness again. And also um, I'm working on another musical um, evening of music for myself called Peter in the background about the late Peter Allen music, um, how it was always the background uh, and sort of like the, the orchestration in my life. So. Awesome. That, I love that. Thank you so much for answering my questions. You're very Thanks. welcome. Thanks for asking them. Anthony? Hey, Kevin, it's Anthony. Um, well, Hello, first of all, Anthony. thank you for... Hello, <laughs> You know how much I absolutely love and adore you. And um, uh, first off, I definitely want to piggyback on the Peter thing. I just want to remind folks that um, you had a great experience with the boy from Oz. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, you come to it from many different directions with, with a, a true sense of understanding. And, and so I can't wait to hear and see that project. Um, yeah. Well, so and also I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, to, just to, just to, just to, let me just sort of throw this in there. Um, the Boy from Oz is the musical about the late Peter Allen's life and Hugh Jackman, who starred on Broadway, who I love and adore, and you know I was grateful to be his standby. That was a show. That was a different storytelling. That was about the life of Peter Allen, and I wanted to do something where I could stand up and perform Peter's brilliant music without it being yeah. – um, you know, a whining um, rant of, I didn't ever get to perform. No, that's not what this is about. This is about, for as long as I can remember, every relationship, every new chapter of my life, where I would step into a project, it was, I can, I can tell you, a Peter Allen song will take me right back to it. And I can go, that's a way into expressing his music. He's got such gorgeous music that has not even been heard for so long because, you know, it was so dated in the beginning, you know? Um, Yeah. So anyway, I'm, it's, it's about some of the non popular songs, but it's really also with the popular songs too. So there you go. Well, we can't wait to experience that. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, as you know, I, I love you. I love Michael. Um, after the first time that we were, you guys were on C2 radio, we had discussed, a a um, a communication that we got about a, a ch- you know a guy sitting with his grandmother and being able to come out and Michael and I mm-hmm. had a couple of conversations over oh, over text messaging after that and and you know I, I feel like lightning strikes if you're lucky once if you're extremely mm-hmm. lucky twice you know lightning has struck a few times for you I, I would definitely say Patrika and 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 Nadia for Days of Our Lives had your three-way bear was, was incredible. Mm-hmm. And then you meet Michael in the gym and in our community, when we say we met at the gym, it, it often connotates something, but for <laughs> you guys, it wasn't <laughs> exactly. It wasn't what that initial connotation is, but you guys had a version of a love affair um, in, in artistic expression. And so I really wanted to give you the opportunity to, to, Give us, Michael, from your perspective, the love, the creation, the the absolute beauty that was Michael, and the beauty that was Michael and Ke- and Kevin creating Brian and Jason, creating After Forever, and and what he meant in your life. That lightning, it will strike again for you because you're just that talented. But this lightning is probably the strongest lightning of of your career. So, give us, you know, in in a way, eulogize Michael. 
And this is your opportunity uh, to really say anything <laughs> and everything you want to say. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks for taking me completely off guard. Um, <laughs> you know me, Kevin. <laughs> um, I've had some hard days. And I've had some easier days. And um, I think one thing that I can honestly say is uh, I thank him for saying hello to me and tapping me on the shoulder. I, 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 I joke about it being a universal crossing point that I could have been on the moon that day and uh, we would have crossed paths. It was, it, there was something that was meant to be for us to connect and it even goes back further uh, when, um, you know, uh, the late Fran Bascom, who was the casting director at the time uh, on Days of Our Lives, uh, sought me out. I was doing a, a play here in town in L.A. and didn't have an agent at that time. And she came to the show. She thought of me for this two-day role of uh, Craig Wesley. And um, she asked me would I do it because I didn't have an agent. I said, sure. And she she joked and she said, we'll pay you, you know. And I said, thanks. Um, and, of course, we know the history. Uh, the two-day roll turned into a seven-and-a-half, almost eight-year seven and a half years. Uh, job on Days of Our Lives. Um, but it was at the tail end of that contract on Days of Our Lives that Michael was brought into writing the writing team at Days, and I never had met him. But he knew of me, and um, he would often say in an interview that um, he was he was proud to have been able to have given me the opportunity to jump into a character and be seen as the actor who he knew I was. Yeah, and he also. Um, he was very, he was very, <laughs> um, uh, 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 the word I, he was always amazed at the tenacity that I had to get things rolling. Like he had the story. Once we had the story, you know, he said, I don't know how to raise money or, you know, I, I, I said, I'll take care of that. I didn't, you know, I was able to go and do what I do very well. And, um, and, you know, I, I can be a great actor. I really, at times, I can be an excellent actor, an outstanding actor. But if I lead my life from acting, I probably, it probably chokes me up and trips me up, so to speak. But if I lead from producer and I use my tools as a producer to move something forward, I can step into that role and be myself. And Michael gave me such um, uh, inspiration because when I said to him, let's do a show about gay men over 30. And he said, yeah, let's talk. And I didn't know his partner had died previously of meeting him. And I didn't know that he was dealing with that kind of loss. But when we, when the whole umbrella of love, loss, and moving on became clear to us, this series wrote itself. And um, I went back to see him in hospice in Connecticut just uh, about a week before he passed and um, he was so very uh, clear minded and he had been taken off of the chemo and the drugs and um, uh, the drugs they were giving him was keeping him off of pain and out of pain but I, I would hold his hand and I would talk to him and he would nod up and down you know not in and out of the conversation and when he would open his eyes back up and he'd say, he'd realize what was going on, he'd just look at me and say, I'm scared. And I'd say, I'm scared too. So we'll be scared together. And I just told him that he meant the world to me in the sense that um, I came to have a friend through a creative opportunity that I would have never had expected. You know, we were business partners for 
those six years, six and a half years. And he gave me an opportunity to step into um, a friendship and a camaraderie and um, a connection that um, is very rare. Um, I don't think that happens all the time. And um, uh, it's something that I will cherish to the end of my days. I can also say I have sat here at my computer or um, I'll be working on something and I'll, and I will say, um, you know, we wrote a show about this. Why aren't you talking to me? You know, <laughs> You're, yeah, we wrote a show about a dead person communicating. Um, through, um, but he did. He did. He came to me. And I will tell you, uh, I had a friend who had a reading, uh, who had a reading with a psychic. Um, and um, he uh, called me up and he said, Kevin, you got to sit down. You got to sit down. And I said, what? And he said, listen, I, I had this psychic reading about some things I was going through the other day. And I said, okay, tell me, tell me. I love this stuff. I'm, I'm all about <laughs> other realms. And he said, the first thing that the psychic said to me was, who is Michael? Who is mm-hmm. Michael? And he, my friend Joey had not put it together about Michael Slade. And this woman went on and on and on and talked about how Michael is going to be there forever. And he wants to eventually connect with another person or this person he was talking to. And uh, it it was just, he let me know through Joey, through the psychic that he's here, he's around and that he'll continue to work through us. And um, that was, that was a gift for me to hang on to. Um, I don't know if I've answered the question. I just know I, I love Michael. I miss him. Okay. Um, His, his, his art will live on. He loves okay. you, and in one well, of I got, our I got pictures. some questions from for Candace, who couldn't make it. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. I have two more to to go to, David. Thank you. Um, <laughs> in um, in one of our communications text messages back and forth, um, he he emphatically made the point to make me understand that after forever couldn't have happened if it wasn't with you. The connection, the way you understood what he was trying to say, the way you guys battled back and forth. These are a a representation of what the text message said. I wish I still had them so I could read them word for word. (laughs) Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional too. But the way you the way you gave him your you know, your unbiased feeling, the you know, this works, this won't work, this you know, you pushed him to be his best. And he pushed you to be your best. And, and I he, think we did that, he, yeah. After Forever would never have happened if it, if, if it wasn't you and him. Um, That's true. So. Thank you. I, 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 I have to agree. And uh, uh, he, he, we lost an extraordinary human being and, and w- remarkable talent, you know. Um, so. More to I, come. I want to thank you so much for, you know, coming to Take Two Radio when you did the Pride Connection um, episodes mm-hmm. as well. Um, you know, Willie asked you, you know, what's next, and, and um, I, I want to ask you, after, you know, the art imitates life situation, what have you learned from playing the character from helping to create the character, from holding Michael's hand, and you know what can we what can we look forward to in season three? So those are my two questions, and then um, David. Has what a was the first part again? The first part of the question. You dropped out to the first part of the question. What was the first? Part? Oh, I'm sorry. From from creating the character, from playing the character, from the, from the back mm. and forth between you and Michael of of making this as real as possible. What have you learned? And, and of course, the second part is what can we expect from season three when you finally get to film it? <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I, that's a good question. I learned, I learned that I could count on myself, that I could count on a vision, that I could, I could have the, um, I could have the foresight to, to persevere and to trust that what I I set out to do could come together and be and become 
what it is. Um, that's the personal thing I learned. Um, the 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 other part of that is I learned how to work and do in this business with a creative, smart, intelligent, and very very precise, uh, thought provoking <coughs> partner who could also help me navigate and help himself navigate. You know, Michael had been through the block a few, uh, been around the block a few more times than I had, and and that's all good. And um, but the experience of the two of us coming together was about growing that um, part of ourselves. And um, I can look back and go, oh yeah, that I can check mark that. That was, and I also found that. Um, my acting and my ability to take on this kind of role and to make this um, to make this uh, character live was an opportunity that I never dreamed I would have. Um, I also had told you, I think, a while back about you know being openly gay and being in the business yeah. and openly gay was never really a, 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 a first choice of mine to check off the list, but it. it it's what I grew into, and what I found was is that this role was all about me taking a chance at just doing and creating what I know. Yeah, and and doing and it from a realistic and a raw and, and a true point of view. Yeah, I mean, any anything that I think is real and personal and and um, and honest uh, is going to transcend from the person portraying it through a screen or on stage and that's that's the gift of theater and, and the movies and TV and telling good stories. Um, where season three is going to go will be the um, I, I, it's, it's, it's basically about Ryan having the opportunity or taking the opportunity to get some help uh, figure out how to begin healing this loss. Yeah. Um, he, in season two, he thinks he's got it down. He thinks it's okay, but he really has to learn how to uh, go through it, forgive it, let go of the grievance, and let go of what was not um, important. I'm going to take a point of privilege, um, David and Candace mm -hmm. and Willie, if you guys don't mind. And ask one more question, um, Kevin. This was this was a labor of love for both of you in different in different mm -hmm. ways. Do you think Michael achieved what he needed to achieve through writing the three seasons, through working with you and Allison to make Riley's uh, unforgettable school project a reality? Um, do you think he achieved what he needed to achieve? Um. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Ha I think with the only thing he did not achieve was being able to stick around to see season three realized and and filmed and out there and hopefully win the raves and the attention and you know and the and, the and they will come. that he well, it's not why you do it, but it's what has happened because of that. And um, I will say that just a week and a half after he died, we were. Um, awarded the um, Glad Media Award for special recognition, which is something that, you know, I, for many years, was hoping we could get our little tiny series in front of these people. And um, there's no category for short form drama, so they created a special recognition award for not just us, but some other people as well. And um, but I, I just when that came down the pipe, you know, I just Michael is glad. He's very glad somewhere else. He's just not here. And um, as much as I, I, as much as I would, I would love to call him up and say, is this great? Congratulations. You know, I, I do it from my desk or I do it from the garden and I, and I do it on my run. And um, it's, uh, it's a, it, there's a line from a book called um, Illusions by Richard Bach about the reluctant Messiah and all of us. And I love, I love this. You, okay. So you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. If you're uh -huh. still here, 
if you're still here, your work is incomplete. It's yep. not over. And I, Michael's work, I have to believe was complete. There's a, there's a season written. It hasn't been filmed yet, but it's complete. And I believe that the love and the, and the passion and the heart and the, and the blood and sweat and even the disease that he came down with this cancer, it's all in there. And he was fighting through this cancer from just uh, right after we released season one. So um, I have to, I have to say it's all in there. It's all in there and it will be, it will be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I know David has handed this can- question. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. So for our friend Candace, Kevin, she says, mm-hmm. after knowing knowing that this project was a labor of love, what do you hope the viewers will take away from this? Well, um, I hope the viewers take away um, – some sort of peace and understanding that um, all that is real is love and love is all that is. And love never dies, even though a relationship may end. Um, the relationship never ends. I'm talking about Michael today um, in a way that um, is still very connected. Um, did I ever expect I would be talking about Michael? In the terms of loss, I it Probably didn't occur not. to me when we first met. No, but um, there, love is the only thing that is real. And um, when someone dies, the love doesn't die. And if you think about it, there are times you will reflect on a situation, or you will be reminded of a situation, and it will bring back that particular relationship or situation and hopefully it's a loving relationship but for as much love as there is after death there's also unresolved feelings as well and that can you know so we um we're here traveling on this little planet together and we've got to be kind to each other we've got to take care of ourselves and we have to remember that love is the only thing that continues continues after we're gone and after we're gone so my, so our other question, I think you may have answered it. So what is the one piece of advice that Michael taught you that you will always keep to your heart and mm. pass on to others? <laughs> and it's probably the, about the same thing, am I correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think... He... I know that he made me really – well, first of all, he made me write down all my story notes and all of my ideas. He wouldn't let me talk. He said, no, write them down. Write them down. You're a writer. You're a writer. I want you to write. And um, I said, okay. Um, so he made me write. Um, and I had, to, I had to find that I had I would have to coax myself to really – it's very easy for me to spin story and talk it and create it and say, oh, and this could happen here, and then, but there's a different muscle that has to be used to write it out. When you write and, it down, yeah. And um, uh, he, he, he reminded me to be patient, and he reminded me to, um, to really uh, to, to be I, – I, Sometimes I would do a scene in 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 the um, on the set, um, knowing full well that what I was doing was on point. He would just say, "Dial it back. You can. This is even even less, even less, even less." And I I was not afraid of doing it less. I just you know sometimes sometimes the creative process you just have to trust in a different way. And um, and um, even while we've been putting together these Emmy reels this this um, season, <clears throat> there's not a lot of story for all of us to put a reel together. It's it's a 
usually the reels that we submit are anywhere from nine to 15 minutes. Most of our reels for our actors this season, um, this special is about mm, four, five minutes. Four minutes. Because the stories, yeah. are, but I believe, and I, I can hear Michael saying this, less is so much more. It's more. And, yeah. the, and, the, and, I, and I believe that the impact of each person we're submitting in these scenes is so, yeah. it's so head on, on point, that um, I believe that we all have a fair fighting chance to, um, uh, to get more nominations at least. And, um, you know, uh, and I think, I think the writing alone, <clears throat> Michael's writing, his words will be, should be acknowledged. And so that's, yeah, uh, just to, I guess to really trust myself more is what he would say. And, um, Kevin, that was a long, was a wanna, long way around to answer that question. <laughs> yes, no, it that's was wonderful. It was an absolutely beautiful answer. I want. I, I actually want to jump in and ask you one more thing. Um, right, Riley's unforgettable school project school is project. absolutely amazing, and I am sure that it's 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 going to garner the attention that it deserves. But the theme of of, of season two was really coming to to understand you know, the relationship for what it was. And really, I, for me, and, and I think every viewer that, that views it, they're going to view it through their own lens. But for me, it was to come to terms with the anger that comes along with, with mm. losing someone that you love. Um, for you, what, are there any things, any, is there anything left that you need to resolve with this partnership, with this love affair that you and oh. Michael had, and again, it was platonic, but it was it was probably the most yeah, no. pure, beautiful relationship. Uh, no, I mean, I I think the relationship and and the and the um, anger that is brought up in season two between Brian and Jason comes from a specific event that I will uh, leave un spoken so we don't have any spoilers for those who haven't yet seen season two and if you haven't shame on you that's <laughs> Amazon Prime shame on you. go check it out yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I um, I believe that um, the relationship that Michael and I had was a, a learning relationship and a, 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 um, learning how to come together as two individuals who were really the soloists for very long times in their own careers. And then we came together and we became this duo and uh, that had to be worked on. And Michael was very good about pinpointing things that made him feel uncomfortable or um, uh, he noticed something in me and I'd say, well, I don't like this sometimes. He goes, oh, my bad. You know, we, we had a real way of finding uh, our, our way to center with each other and the way we worked. Um, I am not angry at him for getting sick. I, 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 I'm, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken for anybody who has that kind of dis-ease in their life. And <clears throat> um, if anything, my, my only upset is that um, he, he fought at the end really, you know, I wanted him to feel the love that he was receiving from not just me, but from everyone around him. And I felt there was, I've seen it happen with other people that um, they're so concerned about not wanting to go that um, it becomes a very shut in place. And it's one of the reasons why I went to see him while we filmed. I wanted to be in his presence to let him know that, you know, let's go do let's let's get you out of the house let's get you into a wheelchair if i have to and i'll you know you don't have to walk i'll you know but um he felt content to hang in his place and do what he needed to do so um that's his choice i can't control that um i can only i could only hope and that you anyone with him in that situation the love that was coming in yeah and and i think anyone in that position i hope they would realize that that is what needs to be done. You just have to be there for the person in the way they are requesting you to be there. And from the very beginning, I, I also set up with Michael. I said, I'm not going to ask you every week, every day, how are you? What's up? How is it happening? What, you know, I, I wasn't going to be that person. Um, I'm sure. And I was confident that 
he would always let me know when things needed to be told. Uh, and I said, don't think I'm not thinking about you. And I, if I feel the need to check in, I will. But I said, um, let's, let's make room for creation and creating. And uh, one of the things he was so good at, and th- this I would like to mention back to the other question, what I learned from him was, um, you know, he, he was going through major chemotherapy and major, major um, um, uh, radiation, everything, um, uh, the last nine months of his life. And he cranked this script out. Like, uh, like he cranked it out. Yeah. He said, no, no, work, work keeps me going. Work keeps me focused, and otherwise cancer wins. And I'm not about to let that happen. So, you know, back to your other question as well: Did he did he did he get everything done? Um, I think he did in that sense. But um, no, I'm not angry at him. Um, I miss him, uh, and I and I I found myself very, I found myself profoundly touched and moved by the outpour of love and condolences sent on Facebook and in the mail from people I don't even know that knew Michael because they knew that we are a team of some sort and um, that the partnership was, you know, the collaboration. Kevin, make no mistake. It's because they knew platonic friendship, collaboration, artists together. It doesn't matter really. They knew he loved you and he knew that you gave your all to this project. You gave your all to your friendship with him. You gave your all to make after forever something that will stand the test of time. Uh, You know, Emmys aside, all the, you know, LGBTQ awards, everything that's all the accolades and they're beautiful. Thank God. I'm so glad that after forever has received the, the Mm -hmm. accolades that is received, but honestly, having a true representation of who we are and grieving the way some people need to grieve. You know, not everybody grieves the same way. Not everybody goes through the stages that, that Brian goes through. But no. being able to connect with that opens up the door to say, hey, how is it for you? How do you need to do this? And he loved you. I, you know, the yeah. couple of text oh, yeah. message exchanges that we had personally, I can tell you point blank. He loved you as a person. He wow. loved you as a collaborator. He loved you as a friend. So thank you thank so you. much for bringing your love mm-hmm. for him and your love for After Forever here to Take Two Radio. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's, it's, you know, it's very interesting, too, how I am, you know, um, I, want, I want this show to be out there. I want people to know about it. I want to continue to talk about it. I, I get on these radio calls or I get on these podcasts or I do an interview, and, and um, I, I catch myself feeling very you know as a producer very flip okay let's get you know this is what it's about this is how it happens but um it also kind of covers the feelings that i'm feeling uh because if i like your question earlier took me so off guard that i oh i guess i have to go there you know um because i'm yeah. feeling it and um uh the work keeps me busy and keeps me off of focusing upon those emotions so um, it's all very present. It's all there. Uh, the love is there. The love is real. Um, he's very missed, but he's also very much here. So, thanks. Thank you for sharing with us. And Thank you know, you have a place here on Take Two Radio. Whenever, whenever you have a project, <laughs> hopefully season three will be sooner than later. But I have a project so. that you're working on. <laughs> please come back and share with us. Well, I hope yeah, I you, hope man. it is sooner before before um before season three. Maybe maybe after maybe after um uh June. We'll see if there's any um Emmy love. Emmy yeah, love to cool. celebrate um with you. So. And I'm gonna do with Carolyn, um <laughs> I, I'm gonna take privilege. It is what it is. Um Carolyn wanted to know about going back for the the last blast reunion on Days of Our Lives, and if they called, <laughs> would you go back again? She she was afraid to ask it because of the subject of tonight, but oh, so I'm going to ask it for her because she's our Days of well, Our Lives. I think queen. she's been watching it for longer than I've been alive, and, and she loved you as Dr. Wesley. 
So <laughs> give her that one little bit, Mr. Wesley. Mr. Mr. Carolyn, uh, here's what I have Craig to say. Craig Wesley. Here's, okay. Yeah. okay, I'm on. Here's I'm what I have Thanks, to say, Anthony. Carolyn. <laughs> Girl, I did it for you because you, I love you as much as I love Kevin. <laughs> Girl... Girl, we're going to get into some days right now. Um, oh, of course, oh, if they, I can't of wait. Course, <laughs> if, of course, if they called me back, I would. Um, I, pending on schedule, of course. If I was available, why not? I, I, had, such, oh, okay. I had such great okay. times there. Um, you do it uh, on screen, so hopefully. <laughs> say what, please? Say what? I said your daughter you is back on contract, so hopefully. Oh, yeah. well, you, you just never know. You just never know. Um, never know what I, I find, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a whole other world. It's a whole other, um, you know, uh, muscle. Um, it's, a, it's an extraordinary amount of work to do again and again. Um, I would take yeah. it on in a heartbeat. But, um, yeah, I mean, last, the last laugh was fun because it was, um, um, it was a reunion. It was just a reunion of all those. And I felt, I felt kind of shortchanged that it didn't get to go any further. It was, like, so short. It, like, kind of excited and then yes. it didn't, you know. Oh, like, okay. oh. Yeah. you're just teasing us. Not, not just the audience. You're, just, you're teasing the actors. You're, we, were, you know, we were having fun, you know. Um, and, um, but I, and, you know, I, I've watched Nadia grow up. You know, I love the woman that she's become. Um, yeah. And, uh you know, it'd be great. It'd be great to go back, of course. Well, thank you for answering my question. And thank I you. am You're going very... to tell you that this has been, oh, uh, an awesome interview. Um, oh, I will you. just say to you, my husband passed 20 years ago. Oh, I'm so and, sorry to hear that. Uh, and all I can say to you is that you are blessed that you will be able to carry on Michael's legacy. <laughs> That is your gift. That is your gift. And communication is key. And Thanks, Carolyn. I had my husband at home with with hospice for a year, and we talked. Mm. We always said <laughs> the good, the bad, and anything in between. There was no holds barred, anger, uh, sadness, love. Everything was was discussed. And this has been a phenomenal interview. I I commend oh, you. Thank I you. Really commend you. Thank you. Yeah. I I I, been very... I I love. I love what you just said too about you know everything gets discussed. There's you know yeah. there's no and he, boundaries and he anymore. He's always with you. He will always be with yeah. you. Yeah, it was the anniversary uh, this week with my husband, and oh, I talk no. <laughs> I talk to him all the time, and he guides all me. the time. He knew me better. I know. We yeah, wrote a he, show about it. We wrote a yes, show about he, it. <laughs> yes, just, yeah. He knew he I, knew I me better it. than I knew myself. He brought a lot a lot out in me. So. Uh, and I'm sure Michael uh, knew you better than you knew yourself. So keep that in mind. Well, and that's I th- thank you, and I and I and I think you're absolutely right when you say that. That's that's why that's that's why we enjoy watching Brian, because his referring yes. to Jason constantly is, oh well, Jason always said this, and then that's that's how Brian defined himself through Jason's eyes. It's 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 this very inside outside inside out thing again, and it's um. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to be able to acknowledge uh, what you just said about your husband knowing the best parts of you. And um, I, I will say something I did learn recently. And um, <clears throat> in my early twenties, uh, the early eighties and the late, you know, into the late eighties and early nineties, um, the AIDS epidemic was running rampant in this, in this world. And I, I. I went through that and lost so many friends and so many, you know, um, uh, acquaintances and, and artistic, you know, um, uh, people I'd worked with uh, in the business and um, mentors. And it just, it was devastating. And I, I think there's something that was sort of locked away. Like, don't ever experience this loss again. And there's something that yes. happened to that generation that survived. Um and and then the pandemic came along, and we started yeah, to watch people are, yeah, and here we are now, again. And here we are now. And yeah. and it opened and then, it all up again in a different way. Well, yeah. Yes, but let me let me let me, let me share this. It, it opened it up because the collective consciousness on this planet right now, everybody, everyone from from the North Pole to the South Pole, we are all depressed. We are all sad. We are all feeling the loss. We are all out of money. We are all out of health. We are. I mean, everyone's in fear. 
and, you know, to navigate through that. And then on top of it, you've got political issues going on and then you've got, you know, whatever. So, and then someone else in your life, whether it's COVID-19 or there's cancer or there's a heart attack or whatever, there's life is continuing to intrude and happen on a daily and an hourly and on a moment basis. And yes. on my second day of visiting Michael in hospice, it was, it was really the last two good days he had um, to communicate. And then the rest of the days were, he was just starting to really slip away. And um, another friend of mine had died in New York. I, she went to sleep and didn't wake up. And um, I, um, I just remember driving to Michael's um, hospice care that day thinking that even when someone is sick, you don't know the last moment you will see them or talk to them. So in honor of everything anyone can learn in this time is to salute and acknowledge the person in front of you and let them know that they're loved and let them know how much they mean to you. And I don't care if you repeat yourself. That's sort of my (laughs) gift that I've been I've been working through because there's too much of it out there to hide away and to, you know, even the neighbor down the street, hello, how are you? You know, great to see you. I mean, you, the next day, one of you could be hit by a bus. And That's that, right. is, that is the plain That's fact. Right. And I know we say that, like, the bus could hit me, but it's true. You could go yeah. to sleep yeah, tonight it's not and, not, and it's be real. here. Yeah, and I'll say, oh, did I tell Anthony how much I appreciated that question? Or, is it, you know, all these, Carolyn, all that stuff. So yeah. my, I just want to say to everybody out there, please remain safe, stay well, stay kind to each other, and let the people you know that you love them. Well, I want to Kevin, give you something to before you, you go, so Kevin. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I want to give Kevin something before he goes, because there's going to be a moment, it may be 10 years, it may be 15, it may be 20 years down the road, but Finn is going to stand at a podium, Golden Globes, <laughs> Emmys, Oscars. He's going to stand at a podium someday, and he's going to thank you and Michael for giving yeah. him the material, the start, the confidence, the experience. You know, it, it it is all about investing in the future. It is all about having the faith to give. You gave Finn the faith. You gave him the opportunity to write that song, to produce that song, to have that moment in Riley's unforgettable school project, one day he's going to stand at the podium. He's going to thank the two of you. And I can't, I only hope mm. that I am still here on earth to experience <laughs> that moment. <laughs> that's a, that is a beautiful future moment to, yeah. um, to look toward. Um, wow. It's very interesting how you kind of change the perspective on all of those things, but that's, I would, what an honor that would be to be thanked by this young Man, he is so talented. What do you see this this music video or hear it? It's great. It's really great. So. Uh, Kevin, I wanted uh, Kevin, I wanted to add also that I lost my husband a few years ago, and um, he was also sick. Sorry to hear that. Only the the sad part on my end was that I didn't know about it until the very end, like right close to mm-hmm. the end when he was like his last day. But I do want oh. to say that my heart goes out to you. You are not alone, and I'm always here to listen. Uh, this is Willie, oh, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and, I know. Um, I will. You know, I I know what you mean about that. He's there to to listen to you because uh, before my husband passed, he also shared also with me, and he knew that he was gonna, you know, that I had all these things planned for my future. But the sad part was he never mentioned that he would be a part of it. So I uh, know what you mean by that. The future is there, but we have to appreciate what we have right now. Right now, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, Willie. Thank you. That's I'm You're sorry welcome. for your loss. And um Thank you. Kevin, we love you. Thank you so much for coming back to the I uh, love you all. Thank you. As soon as the video is out, let us know. We'll promote it and come back as soon as yes. season three is fil- finished filming and we will do everything Great. we have in our power to make sure everybody sees it. We love you so much, Great. Kevin. Love you all. Thanks for having me and stay safe and um we'll talk very soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Bye. 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 Are you okay if I do? Oh, that was great. Wow. Okay. 
He's still there. We've Hold had on. some amazing interviews on Take Two Radio, but I, I, you know, the last Take Two, the last After Forever interview was phenomenal, and and I have to say this. Wow, I, I will go. I, I I will go peacefully into the night, if need be, tomorrow, knowing. I, this is just, this was great. This was great. I, yeah. I hope you guys felt what this really was for for us, for him, for Michael, for Michael, for Michael, Michael, Michael. What a great guy you were. What a great gift you gave to the world. Yes. It was very nice. All right. Well, All right. we are two two radio soaps, so I guess <laughs> Kevin, thank start. you, thank you, thank you. And please don't take any offense, but we've got to talk about the soaps that are on. So <laughs> right. let's start with our queen, let's, Carolyn. Let's start with our queen, Dave. My love. Oh. Tell us about what's going on in Dave's the last couple of uh the last couple of days. What's going on on days the last couple of days? Wow, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Well, uh, I'm going to pass on Brady and Chloe. <laughs> You're going to pass on... Girl! I want to... <laughs> oh, other than all the... Girl, um, don't... Wait, real quick. Don't shot. Chloe need her daddy back? Chloe needs her daddy <laughs> to pop into town. Yes. And Chloe just needs her father back. And come to Jesus moment. <laughs> Oh, yeah. but I want to I want to get to uh, to Mike Manning and Charlie and is it I didn't see it today I was too busy but um, is he really leaving the show Does anybody know for sure what's going on there I'm gonna um, throw that to Willie they started up Willie done it. Hi um as far as I know first the first thing it said that he was gonna be cut from contract recurring. But the latest thing that I heard was that he is leaving. Well, I so read somewhere I guess that he I'm doesn't. Just, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bummed because I love Charlie. I love the actor Mike Man- was it Mike Manning. I adore him. Yeah. He's such a great actor. <laughs> but I gotta say, I'm very surprised right now with the chemistry going on with Trip and Allie. Oh yeah. I am not. <laughs> I didn't expect okay. it. I mean, I remember when she was mad at him because of what happened. But to switch it and to make him look like there could be a possible pairing, I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Also, I want to send a shout out to Linda Dano. I love her playing the role of Vil- uh, of Vivian, especially yes. the part that she did this week. With remember, she does it with Stacey Haddock, which of course is we all know it's Kristen Susan. So when they're getting ready to do the switch and she's pretending to yeah. do a heart attack, they, it's so funny how they look at each other <laughs> like what? <laughs> look at your kids. Okay. Me? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to weigh in on that. And, and the first thing I'm going to say, first and foremost, is no one is ever gone in the same room. For no one is. That's true. That's, right. that's the first thing I'm going to say. And Charlie, you know, I love to hate him. And that's exactly what should happen with a character like this. We should love to hate him. And we did. And, and hopefully they will find a creative way to extend the love to hate, you know, Michael's saga. Um, now, Linda Dano, another world, one life to live, all my children, general hospital, days of our lives. This woman <laughs> is, without a doubt, soap opera royalty. There is yep. no way, and I love me, I absolutely love me some Robin Strasser, who also skips across various daytime shows, of course, the, the incomparable, unforgettable Dorian Lord. And then again, she took, stepped into the shoes of Vivian. But Linda Dano, wow, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, Dave, for all, of, for all of the moments where you make us shake our heads, where you make us say to ourselves, you know, uh, can we stick with this? You give us moments like Linda Dano playing the man. Um, <laughs> oh, I can, oh my. I can say, though, I can tell you that uh, with the, with tomorrow, today's already Thursday, so Friday. Friday, make sure to uh, set your DVRs because tomorrow is supposed to kick off the the Who Done It with um, my uh, Charlie. And what I'm enjoying about this story 
as much as people are going to hate that Charlie will leave, I like the way they're setting up the suspect list because there's going to be quite a few suspects, and we all know that Sammy's returning. So Sammy, ret- I think Sammy she, I'm not sure if she today. returns tomorrow. Did no, you know today? I'm mean, Sammy's returning yeah. tomorrow. Okay. So well, she make sure you put those up because that's going to be interesting yes. uh, with what's going on. And then the latest for you, uh, as you all know, uh, Katie McLean did leave as Jennifer, but she's going to be returning as far as doing phone calls for a few episodes coming back up uh, as we lead into March. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yes. I'm yeah, not I sure how many, but I do know it's going to be a couple episodes. So I'm excited for that because I always adore Missy, but I'm loving Katie McClain playing the role of Jennifer. I just love her little spin as playing Jennifer Rose. It's just adorable. It, it absolutely worked. It worked well, and, and kudos to Days of Our Lives for giving another nod to another daytime vet stepping into the role from Melissa Reeves, Katie McLean has blown it out of the park. But I, I have to ask you guys, at this point, you know, yeah. if Eileen Davidson were to step into the Susan Kristen role, would it be the same for you? No. Because no. at this point, I feel no. like Stacey Haddock has made it. They have made those two yeah. roles hers. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with you. She's I agree phenomenal. With- I, if I had to choose and, and to be honest about it, which one would I want? Um, I've enjoyed Eileen's uh, version, but I'm just so into Stacy's right now. I couldn't see them switch back because I'm really just loving it. Like especially was I think it was yesterday or the day before. <laughs> I'm laughing trying to think of it. She's okay. It's Stacy. Uh, it's um. It's Susie coming to the door. And she's <laughs> she's talking about the fake teeth and all that with with uh, Kristen, and she comes in, she sees that Chloe's touching Brady with her hands, <laughs> <laughs> and she tells him, "Get your dirty ass off of Brady." Oh, get your dirty hands. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm you sorry, you know Miss Eileen Davidson. It's Stacy. Miss Eileen Davidson, to... I love you. Oh my but God. Stacy has made this. She is taking oh my God. And she's I'm sorry, Ron. Ron, you need to keep Stacy on. I don't care if you're thinking of writing her off as uh, Stace, uh, was it? As uh, Kirsten. Kirsten and Susan. As, on. As, as yes. Susan, keep them both because I know what, I, I know people get annoyed at Susan sometimes, but you know what? I love it, especially when she tells, um, oh, when she tells, uh, oh, what is her name? Um, Sammy, the one that returns. I love it when she gets mad at Sammy. She's like, Sammy, you're so mean, mean, mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're a meany, meany, meany. This is what makes Dave's number one in my book because it's the humor, it's the action, and it's the drama. That's exactly what we need in a soap opera right now. Yeah. It, it is. And, I and honestly, you guys. Stacey, I have a Stacey question has for not you. gotten the accolades that she deserves for having stepped into multiple roles, because don't forget, she's played other roles other than Susan and, and, and um, Kirsten. She stepped into multiple roles, and she's, she's made them believable. She's made them memorable, and she has not gotten the recognition that she deserves up to this point. So Ron no. and, and Ken, please force Stacey Hyduck to submit herself this year for the Daytime Emmys. Please, please, please. And Carolyn, also, you know, there's know another that you character have... that there's another character Hello? that Stacy could play. Also, um, I don't know if you all remember when Chris uh, Eileen played her, but um, there's another character of Moira. Susan's and Kristen. I believe it's the nun. The yeah, nun. Uh-huh. Oh yes. 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 So you know, if they really wanted to um, push it, they have another reason. Mm-hmm. But Carolyn, please use your um, use your personal connections, and please ask Stacy to come talk with us because she deserves accolades. And what better place than coming to Take Two Radio to get them? David, you have I missed my opportunity. I missed I missed my opportunity with her last year. She was so she is she is so sweet in person, and um, Isn't I said she? about you know She's the radio so show and coming on it. She, I said, well, uh, we have to get in touch with your agent. She says, I don't have one. She says, come on in the bathroom. We'll do an interview there. And I said, I, I missed my, I missed my chance. But this May, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to her again. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. David, you had a she's question a, for us? Real. Yes, I do. Pardon? Uh, Go ahead, David. 
Okay. We have Emily O'Brien on the canvas. And if we had to pair her up with someone for her longevity, who would you pair her up with? And hmm. Dave's queen, Miss Carolyn. I loved it with Charlie. She had such chemistry. Is that Gwen? Gwen, yes. Gwen, yes. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that one. <laughs> who could who could turn Not around? Not based Come upon on. the storylines that have happened and are currently happening, but if we if I could have a little bit of rewrite privilege, I would absolutely put her with Paul Telfer, aka Xander. Well, I, I thought that I be, thought that yeah I yeah I would put yeah I would, yeah but uh, he's so locked up or, with Sarah now. Or they could always <laughs> they could always bring her character back. Remember uh, Vivian's was it Vivian's nephew, right? Uh, Nicholas Alamein. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, Victor Webster, please! Oh my God, bring him back! I absolutely love him. Bring him <laughs> back. Victor Webster, Nicholas Alumi, yes. Can you yes, imagine the yes. ratings? Can you imagine the fans going crazy? Oh. I, Do you remember when I he was can. on Sex and the City? But I, I, think I saw that. But, yeah, oh. you know they're going to do a reboot, right? You know they're going to do a reboot for uh, HBO Max. Yeah, I saw yes, that. And they, they are one of the very few series that are going to address the COVID-19 situation. Sex in the City oh. is going to be hit by COVID-19. I have a feeling since they released that in, in the last, like, four days, that that is going to be the storyline that lets us, that un, makes us understand why Samantha, because Kim Cattrall, and God bless her, I absolutely love her. I am not mad at her for not wanting to come back. She played Samantha for over 20 years. She's done with that character. Nobody mm-hmm. else, maybe Sharon Stone, maybe Meryl Streep, possibly Madonna. There are three actresses that could possibly step into that role and, and be able to, to pull it off. Other than that, no one else is going to play Miss Samantha Jones. So since there's they are update, addressing the COVID-19 an update for situation. You for the Sex in the City. I don't know if you knew this, but the character that played, the actor that played the character of Mr. Big, he won't be a part of it either. I know. No, I heard he's that doing. Too. He's doing another series now. He's doing another series. John. Clark. I have a feeling oh, that since and, they've released uh, that they're addressing the COVID nineteen situation, that Sex in the City is going to to usher Samantha into the next world via COVID nineteen. Oh. Mm. Well, did yeah. anyone see Filthy Rich with her? I mean, she produced it. It was fabulous, but I hear that there's not going to be another season. I mean, no, that was a Filthy great. Rich was I, I did hear that. And it was that was so a good great. series. Yeah. That was a good series. Oh, but so you know what? Good. There's hope. There's hope because between HBO Max and Paramount Plus that debuts this month in March, coming up, there's a possibility they could always, if they really wanted to, they could do a re, they could do a. Uh, they could do a renewal. I don't know if you guys knew this, oh. but Paramount Plus just renounced, announced that they renewed the defunct uh, season of Criminal Minds, and it's coming back with the new season on Paramount Plus. Oh, okay. I okay. did hear that. Well, and hope. Jamar Moore, yeah. Thomas Gibson, and um, what's her name? The girl that plays uh, the little nerdy girl, um, Kristen Baganess, or whatever her name is, they're all going oh, yeah. over to the new season. Which is awesome. It's a limited, it's a limited yeah, run. It's a limited so, run, but if fans pick up on it and they like it, they're 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 willing to go further, like to renew it for like more episodes. So let's get the fans out there. Let's all watch it and let's make it the top number one show on Paramount Plus. I think it debuts March fourth. And everybody, okay. Shamar Moore had his own series on CBS. The fact that he went back so that uh, Criminal Minds could have a second life. Is amazing. He didn't make any mm-hmm. extra money, so you know the fact that he went with the show so that it could have it could live a second life is absolutely amazing. So if you're on Twitter mm-hmm. and you see Shamar, give him kudos because it's it, it's well mm-hmm. deserved. Sounds good. Carolyn, what else is going yeah. on in, with Diz right now? Um, is it Cherie that's coming? Jack Hayes. Oh, that was a question. Do we know what's going on with Jack Hayes' character? Like, I'm kind of like intrigued by her. Do we have any backdrop on what's going on with her and what she's going to be doing in town? She's related she to the aunt? Carvers. She's, yeah, she's going to be an aunt, I think. 
on the show in a couple of weeks. So, She's coming in a couple uh, of weeks. I just need to see Jack A in a scene yeah. where she says to somebody who is LGBTQ, Mary, please. <laughs> Mary, say so shout out to Ron. Mary. I love that they did the promo for Jack Key to return. I was, yes, a, I was, yes. I got to admit, as a fan, I expected a little bit more of a promo than what we got. But they did do a promo for her to show up in Salem, and I love the promo that she did do. They, she gets, you get kudos for that, Ron. Very good. Yeah. And I got to give the, the creators, the, the writers, the executive producers, we are going to see one scene between Jack A and Linda Dano. That has been oh, confirmed. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, that history, that soap history needs to be acknowledged. And, Ron, yeah. uh, honestly, of all the shows, of all the producers, of all the writers, of you know, Ron really does know how to give us nods. I mean, think about it. When Robin Strasser played Vivian and she was paired up in those scenes with Eve, you know, Dr. Kramer, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. That's a Ron really knows how to give us our Easter eggs and, and give a nod to soap opera history. Yep. All right. Let's travel over to Los Angeles and let's talk about <clears throat> what's going on in Bold and the Beautiful. David, what's going on with our Foresters, Spencers, and the rest. Well, um, there is suspicion that Thomas's friend Vinny switched the paternity test results since he supposedly works in the lab where it all happens. Vinny Bradley so, Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a Bradley Cooper. He's B&B's Bradley Cooper. Um, so I don't know. I did not see it today, but I know Thomas has that suspicion, and it's nagging on him. So I'm wondering what he's going to do about it. I think he can I got a surprise for you on that. I know. I'm not going to tell you who. I'll let you guess on that. But, yes, Vinny did do a little bit of – what everybody's thinking, yes, the the results were switched. However, there's a twist to it. There's somebody to help Vinny. So if you think about it really hard, you might figure it out. Exactly. And when you figure that out, you realize that Vinny actually has a tie to the canvas that we didn't know when he first appeared, but will keep us lingering, so to speak. There is a prior relationship with Vinny that's going to be exposed. Oh, I hope. Oh, oh, also, what I also Finn has the secret. Finn has Finn has the secret coming out soon that will surprise everybody that no one saw coming. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, and I think I know who you're talking about. You do, David. I think if 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 I know you well enough to know, I I think you I think you know exactly. I think, Come back in two um, weeks and listen to we, Nature Radio we so we can talk about Shana? that. Willie. Yeah, okay, thing? since he said it, since he said it, okay, yeah, I, I'll admit that I I heard that too. Uh, Vinny, uh, what's on Vinny? Um, trying to get these characters all together. Finn is supposed to be having a, some type of connection towards Shauna. So that's what I'm looking yeah. forward to because I always enjoy Shauna. She's fun. I've enjoyed Finn, and I'm glad that the, the writers are starting to expand his character. Instead of just Liam Hope and Steffi, he's pushing it. And now we're going to get a little more into Finn's life, which is good because Sean is going to mix things up in a in a new way. Well, Vinny has the Shauna connection, but uh, I'm sorry, um, Finn has the Shauna connection, but Vinny actually has a Quinn connection. Stay tuned. Come back in two weeks, and we will discuss. We will be. Oh my God! Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! No, oh, yeah. Boyfriends okay. and girlfriends. Which, yes. which soap is next? I can't wait. I'm loving this. All right. Let's jump over to Genoa City. All right. Okay. I've got okay. to share this because I just got thrown out. I am so confused right now, and it's very, like, crazy with this whole storyline of Abby trying to get the surrogacy going. Now you got, okay, first she involved Mariah. Now she's involving Devon. And I'm loving Amanda for telling Devon. 
he needs to be careful because there could be some legal ramifications involving this whole situation. Okay. I'm going to take a page real quick for our two ladies that are not here with us this evening. They need to, they needed and need to, and will in perpetuity need to bring back stitch. Um, having said that, who the hell is Abby anymore? I do not know yeah. this character anymore. Am I the only one that, like, looks at her now and says, who the hell is she? Well, you know what? The way I see it, if they were to write Abby off, like, if Chance, when Chance left, he could have just took Abby. Because this storyline, nothing against the biracial story or anything like that. I'm all for it. But the way it's being written and the way they're portraying it, it's disgusting fans, which, including me, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't understand the way they're going with it. But at the same time, it's just it's very weird. It's very confusing. But here's my thought. If Abby is so quick on having a baby, why didn't she just do adoption instead of the surrogacy? And the other part yeah. is, wait till Chance pops up. I have a feeling he's going to throw fit because she's doing all of this behind his back. I mean, it's one thing to do it in front of Nina and telling Nina, oh, I can't wait. we got to pick this donor for the baby yeah, and all this stuff. To go ahead Poor Nina. It. You can tell Nina's ready to go nuts over Abby driving her crazy with this. He did okay, tell her I'm to sorry. go ahead with it. But they, he did tell her to go ahead They have with dropped it. the ball. They have dropped the ball so many times on the one pairing that would light up Young and the Restless. Abby and Devon. And Devon. Abby and Devon. Abby and Devon. They, they have dropped the ball on that so many times. And it's like, okay, you've written it at the perfect opportunity where she can cry on his shoulder. Under, he can understand where she's coming from. The whole, you know, uh, Amanda will never be Hillary. And, oh, my God, it's you. I've been staring at you all this time and never realized it's you. What the hell are you doing, you and the restless? Now, I have to ask I, you I guys, love Amanda. But you know what? I I got to say this, and I, I've, I mentioned this before on the podcast and even on media. It's just a part of me that still feels that Amanda could be Hillary because the way she acts sometimes, she's got a lot of those Hillary mannerisms. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it's not just like we don't see it. It's like she's not really. I don't know if they're meant to do it or not, but it's like she's either being no, subtle or she's throwing a hint out, like the way she was one time with Elena, and then with Mariah, and with Phyllis. That reminded me so much of Hillary. With Phyllis, with Phyllis, exactly. In those scenes with Phyllis, that's exactly where it came out. I don't so think do you that think, it's in the do writing. Do you think she could I be a split personality? Do you think that do you think that they're going to do a Phyllis? I mean, a, a Hillary and Amanda split personality? You know, to be uh, honest, I'd actually, I'd actually like to see a storyline like that play out. I really would. Well, remember they did. Uh, JG did hint that when we were going to introduce Naya as um, Amanda's mom, there was going to be a twist coming. I thought the twist was going to be that the, the dad was alive. But what if the twist is that Hillary and and Amanda are the same person in a way, kind of like Cindy Solita from Guiding Light? What if they're going that angle? What do you think? I, you know, honestly, in a different show, I'd be like, no, absolutely not. With the Young and the Restless, I'd actually like to see that play out. Michelle, Michelle Morgan had such an undeniable, I mean, she changed the scope of Young and the Restless in such an incredible way that if they did this, it would absolutely work in their favor. Let her, let her slowly morph back into the Hillary that we knew and let the fallout play out. What happened with the baby? What happened with the love that was there between Devon? Let her slowly regain her memories, et cetera, et cetera. And that would be storyline that would take us through the next three years. That would well, be phenomenal. I've got, I've got some explosive little teasers and one quick spoiler for you. This is going to be fun because I love you and the rest of us here. Okay, first of all, get ready because Kyle's baby mama, Tara Locke, appears in Genoa City. I yep. can't wait for this. Okay. Kyle's going to demand a DNA test, but there's there's a secret that they've yet to be revealed in that storyline, which is going to be interesting. I'm wondering what it's going to be like. I'm wondering if maybe they're going to cast Tara Locke's husband that she cheated on with Kyle. That will be an interesting take on that. Okay, the other part is, um, was it Phyllis 
is going to demand from Lauren for her to fire Sally. And this will make Sally go after Phyllis, and she's going to start targeting Nick. But she's also going to be dating Jack. So get ready for a fun, exciting yeah. March Madness. What do you okay. What do you guys feel on, on Sally and Jack? Jack? Yeah. No. You know, I got to admit, at first I wasn't really sure. I thought it was going to be a little weird. But I got to admit, now that I realized what they're planning to do with it, I have a feeling it could work. Because think about it. If we think about it, it's why in our fans. What happened with Jack Abbott and and uh, Jack Abbott and John Abbott in the past, if you recall? This will be history no. repeating itself. Because it's going to be – Okay. No. It, Sally? Really? No. No, 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 no. It's time for the Young and the Restless to take Jack and Lauren and explore that dynamic that they flirted with us at least seven to ten times over the last, like, 15 years. It's time for them oh, to no, take I that dynamic. Oh, no, I love Lauren and Jack, yeah. 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 No, it, it doesn't work with Sally. I, and, and, David, correct me if I'm wrong, because Willie's only been on the show for a couple of months. Am I yeah. not a, an entirely devoted fan to Sally? I want Sally yeah, as long are. as we can have her. I don't care what show she's on. I love Sally. The character is great. The actress, oh, my God, I absolutely love her. But pairing her with Jack is not the right way to go. They need to okay, so what would you play do the with dynamic Sally? between Jack and Lauren. And with Sally, what, what would you do with Sally? Because it seems like they don't know where to put her. Because they need to throw her in Billy's orbit. Because it would it, it would open up the storyline for all of all of what has always been simmering between Jack and Billy in the first place, and it brings Phil anything that brings Phyllis into the orbit also will always be okay with me. So yeah. have her with have her start to feel things towards Billy. Have Billy start to recognize that she's someone that can throw a monkey wrench into all the plans that are going on right now, let him go after her in a manipulative way, and then understand and feel that she's someone that could actually understand him, et cetera, et cetera, and then push Lauren and Jack together. The dynamic between Chris, you know, Christian LeBlanc, who obviously plays, um, oh, God, Michael. why is my brain? Michael, thank Michael. you. You know, Michael and Jack, that whole relationship. Michael and Lauren, that whole relationship. Jack and Lauren, that whole relationship. And don't forget, we have Gloria back on the canvas. So Gloria can be the foil for all of what could happen beautifully. Let Gloria mix up and, and mess everything up. It's, it's perfect storytelling if they go the, in, in, the, in that direction. Let's hope they go there. So here's okay. my other question. What do you feel about this whole uh, congratulations to Sasha Kale on being cast as Supergirl for the Flash uh, oh, Sasha, movie? I That's I exciting. A? I am so excited. I'm proud of her because it's representing the Latin community, which is even better. Um, but I'm curious, what do you think will happen with Lola? Because there's, there's uh, you know, gossip oh, that honey. maybe she should be recast. Or just left. What do my, you think about that? No, my willy, 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 absolutely congratulate her. I think that she is perfect and will have a an amazing transitional career in this. Girl, just let Lola go. Let it go. It never worked. It, there were moments where it flared up and, and there was pieces where it could work. But it's really, ultimately speaking, has never worked. Let and they have an opening. Go. They have an opening. They could send, they could send Lola. You know, nothing wrong with Lola, but they can go ahead and send her off to her mom, who remember a few weeks ago she was sick. Send her off to Florida, and there you go. Write her off for just a, you know, even if it's for a little while. Just go ahead and send her exactly. off because there's nothing to do with Lola right now. They obviously don't know what to there's do with nothing. her right now. They don't know what I to don't... do with her. They never knew what to do with her. Send her off. But if you are going to send her off, actually, please hire Avril LaRue back for a couple of episodes and have her bring or usher Lola off the canvas. Because the dynamic between Avril LaRue and Lauren, a.k.a. Uh, Tracy Bergman, Jack, Peter Bergman, I, 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 there's so much that can be played. And it would open the door to bring Celeste back to the canvas. And honestly, yeah. they dropped the ball. They should have they should have signed a frigging contract and brought her back. 
Now, if Eva LaRue is going to appear on Pine Valley... I got a quick challenging question for you on the um, – was it for the Young and the Restless? Uh, what do you feel about the way they're going with um, the Lily, Lily, Billy, and Victoria situation? Do you think oh, it's God, just – Oh, God, I am so done with that. Do you that. see it going anywhere? I mean, what is no. the point of all that? Victoria no, there's no point new. to it. That's the problem. Victoria – exact. thank you, David. Victoria needs someone new, and Billy needs to get with Sally. That's where it needs to go. They, you know, I, Young and the Restless, Candace, I wish you were here. I hope you're going to listen to this in podcast form because Candace and I have been in marriage counseling with the Young and the Restless because we really want our relationships to work. We love our show. But honestly, they keep setting up these amazing possibility storylines and then leaving us hanging. Nothing happens. Nothing happens, and it, it, there's only so many times that that can happen that we're going to stay invested. I, Phyllis, you have a, an incredible I, – I, there is no better actress on daytime right now. You've got Maura West. You've got Fanola Hughes. You've got um, – uh, uh, on Days of Our Lives, what's her name? You know who I mean. And, you know, you've got Jacqueline McGinnis Woods. You've got Michelle Stafford. You've got these powerhouse actresses, and you're putting them in scenes that are just ridiculous. Remember a year and a half ago when they were all sitting around eating chicken wings and mozzarella sticks at the bar, and it was like, what are you doing with these people? <laughs> you know, no. I, Willie, I love you, but no. And on that note, we've got to go over to Port Charles because there is a lot to talk about in Port Charles. And I'm going to be the one to start. We are, finally, we are finally going to see the reckoning day for Peter. Pam, yep. you, you, I, know you love you, you, I know you love you some Peter, but it has been God. way too long a time coming. And we are finally going to see the fallout. And it Anthony? Yeah. Anthony? I God. was applauding... When Lisa found Alex's disc from Dimitri. Girl, yes, yes. First off, the nod to the history to all my children, because what they did, I'm sorry, General Hospital, I've been with you since I am three years old. What you did to the character of Alex Tamara was a crime. It, was, it, it should be prosecuted and somebody should go to jail for what you did to the character of Alex Tamara. However, when Liesl stumbled upon that piece of information, I was like, yes, okay, it is time to bring it back now. You guys, you know Alex is not dead, right? Oh, no, I never suspect Alex is dead. She, she always comes back. I, well, I don't know. They said that she was, her run was over. That's what they said when, the last time, but I don't know now, so anything's possible. Uh, I've got a challenging David. question for you. If you David. watch, did everybody watch today's GH? No, I did not watch today's GH. But but give okay, me, so okay, me then I won't I won't spoil too much. But I am going to tell no, you. Pay close attention to a letter. Pay close attention to a letter that will be seen on today's episode, and it's going to make you guess about what's going to happen next. Uh, okay, David. Is I have to ask you because you're the switch. one that is. You are the most. You are the one that is most involved in this storyline, David. Are yeah. you happy with where all this is going with your man, with your with your friends, your your syncopated love, Mister Chase? You know where I'd like to have him because I thought it was beautiful from the beginning. And I'm probably going to mourn it because I think it's, I, I don't know when, but I think, I think it's going to be over. Um, I didn't I see, I don't see a Michael and Willow together because I thought they're like, you might as well be with Jocelyn. That's what I thought of it more. Um, 
And plus, I mean, Josh and Katie had so much of a contrast, and I saw so much magic between them. But um, let's say I'm excited for what's coming up for him, even though I'm going to miss my pairing. Okay, well, I I, I think I'm going to applaud telling you this. Mr. Rick Hurst, a.k.a. Sonny's brother, Rick, yes. will be back on Canvas by the end of April. So everything that's being set up right now is writing the story for how he comes back in and who he ends up having a history with is going to surprise the hell out of everyone. We all know he's got a history with Sonny, Carly, Jason, yeah. Alexis, Molly. But the one person that we don't know the history with is going to surprise the hell out of everyone. And I can't wait for Rick Hurst to show back up in General Hospital. Well, awesome. I love Anthony, that. that is cool. Since you um, asked me that question first, you might be ref- – are you suggesting something to me? I am. I am, Mr. David. Go with it. Go ahead. You think – are you saying it's Chase or no. Willow? It's Willow. <gasps> oh, my Lord. Does anybody uh-huh. does anybody get the vibe? Does anybody get the vibe that Wiley is not really Michael's son, but I always felt that it was more like Chase's son. You know, that would be a very interesting Because remember, remember now did play. sleep now did sleep with um oh, Carolyn Chase, But she also slept with Dylan. Don't forget she also slept with Dylan too. That would be a very interesting dynamic to play, but I don't think they're gonna go that way. When they bring Nell back, it's going to rock the whole canvas. And you know they're bringing Nell back. And they need a DNA test. Well, the reason I'm bringing up Chase, um, um, the situation of Dylan, is because we, we, I'm loving this fight with Carly and, and, and Nell. I'm, 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 I'm pushing Carly aside because I'm a team Nell right now. But let Carly keep fighting Nell with this about her not seeing grandson and all this because that's what makes me think. I don't think you Wiley mean is her grandson. Yeah, Anita, yeah. You I don't think Nina? Nina, I don't think Wiley yeah, I don't think Wiley is um the Carly's grandson that she thinks is Michael's. I really think that he's gonna turn out to be Chase's or or Dylan's because we all know that Nell like to play games, like head games. So maybe she was just pursuing Michael because she wanted him, but that doesn't mean that he's the baby's daddy. I think there's gonna be more to that story. Interesting. Okay, especially let's, if they bring back Nell. I mean, that would be a that would be a great opening right well, there. No, no, no. We already, we, already know Nell is, we already know Nell is coming back. Nell will be filming in April for the end of May sweeps. So, so okay. we're going to see okay, a cool. dynamic between Nina and Nell. We are going to oh, see cool. a dynamic between Nina, Carly, and Nell, and Jax. I'm pretty sure that that's gonna that's gonna pull Jax into the rain jail. So um, my last question for y'all is: What about um, with Morgan? Is are they gonna bring Morgan back, or is there a reason to keep bringing his name a lot? Is that just is that just a like a, a red herring? So we know that Maurice Bernard is gonna disappear from the canvas for about two months. He's got a contract to film a movie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I oh I'm yeah yeah I remember moment. we congratulated him on the film. Yeah, yeah, that I one's have no out, idea exactly, I think. I have I no idea exactly where the storyline is going to go, but I have a I have a feeling, knowing GH, that he's going to find Morgan, not knowing, still being in his, um, you know, not knowing who he is state, find Morgan, and then when he comes back to Canvas as Sonny and regains his memory, that's what's going to bring the Morgan back. Are we going to see? But Brian we don't Craig know yet Morgan? if it's going to be. It's, we don't know if it's going to be um, the the Morgan that we remember before, or do we know if it's going to be a recast? We don't know. Um, we don't know. The fact that you know the show was canceled and there's been so many hints, I I would hope that it is Brian Craig, 
especially since Kelly Seibold, you know, his his real life love is also on canvas right now. Um, I would hope yep. that it's him, but I think we're gonna. The, the last time we see Sonny slash Mike, as he is known at right now, the last time mm-hmm. we see him on canvas, he's gonna come across Morgan. We're not gonna see him for a while. When we finally catch up with him again, he's gonna know that Morgan's out there. And that's the way the storyline is going to play out. Okay, good. I'm excited about that. I heard a rumor about that, but I wasn't sure if it was true. So hearing that from you, that definitely has a smile to my face. I'm a big Morgan fan. Yep. Okay. And, now, and, and then Maurice, Maurice hinted at something on Facebook or Twitter. I saw. He said, "I'm." He says, "I like my I like my scene partner today, but I can't tell you who it is." Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's going to be a Nina twist to that, and there's you think- also. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Please go ahead. There's also going to there's going to be a Jack's twist twist Jack's twist to it as well, and I think that that's what's going to usher Ring Ingo Rod- Rodmacher back off the canvas again. When all is said and done, he's going to be gone for a while. Again, you're not heading to a Force. Brenda return, are you? Um, you know, honestly, they never played out the storyline with um, Dev, so I think it's a very strong possibility. But I think that Jack is going to find out through Nina and play some games, and that's going to facilitate his exiting the screen for a while. For a while. That's just. That's just for a while, yes. That's just my knowledge of GH up to this so, point. So who do you guys want Valentine with? Do you want him to go back to Nina, or would you rather him be with Anna? I'm Honestly, looking... Oh, jeez. I um, want him with Brooklyn or Lucy. <laughs> as far as the pairing, it's just a pairing. I mean, they don't have to be a couple, but just the fact that they get together. I like the chemistry with Valentine and Anna. I mean, I, I he was great with, with Nina for a little while, but if they're going to shake things up, I could see the pairing between Valentine and Anna because the chemistry is just off the charts. The chemistry is off the charts, but the way that the storyline has been written up to this point, it's just not plausible for it to go that way. I'd like for them to, to forge... You know, they've already forged the friendship. I'd like to, for them to forge the bond that will be everlasting, but I'd like to see him go in the direction of, I really, honestly, I would really like to see him with Lucy Co. personally. I don't think it'll ever happen, but I'd like to see him, more likely we're going to see him with Brooklyn. We're going to see Brooklyn come back. and, and she's that coming back, dynamic. I hear, the end of March. The end but of March, I don't know. yeah. But I don't know if that means she'll be back on air the end of March. We'll see her then. Or she starts taping at the end of March. They're only, I they're I only never about can three tell weeks behind. Means. So even if that is the case, then she'd be back mid-April, towards mid to end of April. Oh. Um, oh, okay. And honestly, as much as I am really liking Sam and Dante, I'd actually like to see a little bit more play between Brooklyn and Dante, too. But ultimately, ultimately, I think the Valentine Brooklyn dynamic would be awesome to play. Because don't forget, they haven't resolved the whole ELQ issue either yet. As of right now, yep. the Valentine still controls ELQ. Okay, we got a minute, guys. We got to say good night. Good night, Everyone, everybody. Thank you. Please go we'll check out Riley's Unforgettable School Project on Amazon Prime. And we will be back in two weeks to discuss all the developments between now and two weeks with Days of Our Lives, The Bold and the Beautiful, Young and the Restless, and, of course, General Hospital. We'll be back in two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Okay, see you soon. Get connected with Take-Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take-Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.